One of the biggest concerns with AWS Lambda is, well, rather has been cold starts. A cold start is the initial delay when a Lambda function is first invoked or after a period of inactivity. AWS Lambda Snap Start is a performance optimization that speeds up the startup times for a Lambda function, typically without any changes to your function code. In this video, let's learn how to get started using AWS Lambda Snap Start and how to set it up for your existing Lambda functions. We will also learn how Lambda Snap Start works and some of the things to keep in mind when using Lambda Snap Start. We will also learn how to use runtime hooks with it. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET, Cloud and DevOps. This video is sponsored by AWS and is part of my AWS Lambda series. Here in Visual Studio, I have an existing Lambda function that is written in .NET. Now, this function has a constructor which initializes two variables. One is a constructor ID, which is a random new GUID that is initialized and it also reads a configuration from S3. Now, once the handler is invoked, it does a simulate work method, which simply creates a delay of two seconds. This is just to perform some work. We also log out some of these IDs. So we have a string text, which logs out a constructor ID, which is the ID that got initialized within the constructor, and also the function ID, which is simply a random new GUID that is within this function handler. We also log out the configuration object and also the input that is getting passed to this particular Lambda function. This is purely so that you can identify between different Lambda requests. Now, this is a demo application that I have created to simulate much of the real world work that you would do in a normal Lambda function. You might have some startup code which is inside your constructor and also the normal function handler. Now, I have already deployed this function to my AWS account. So here we have the Lambda snap start. And if I navigate into this, I can see the details of this function. Now, if we were to invoke this function for the first time, let's navigate into the test. Let's say test by passing in a test snapshot event. So let's click the test button, which is going to invoke this Lambda function. Now, since this function has an artificial delay of two seconds, it's always going to perform for two seconds and it returns this result. Now, if I go to the monitor tab and navigate to the CloudWatch logs, we can see the console writes that we have made. So if I navigate into the screen, here we have the constructor ID, the GUID, the function ID, which is another GUID, and also the config ID and the input that we have passed. Now, what's interesting to us in this case is this line which shows the init duration. Now, since this Lambda function was invoked for the first time, or after a period of inactivity in my case, because I had it already deployed, this is having a cold start. Now, as you can see here, it took around 549 milliseconds to initialize and start up our Lambda function. Now, if I make a subsequent request, the function is already created. So if I make one more request in this case, this is still going to take two seconds to execute the function. However, if I navigate into the CloudWatch, you can see here in this case, we don't have an init duration being written out. This is because the Lambda function is already initialized and created and it just invokes the same function. You can also tell that it is the exact same function instance by looking at the constructor ID, which has the exact same GUID in both these executions. So this constructor ID was getting created inside the constructor of our Lambda function. So if you understand the Lambda lifecycle events, which I have talked about in this channel before, you can find the link to the video in the descriptions below. We see that the Lambda function in our case was only instantiated once and was reused for both the calls. So when the first initialization happened, it created this constructor GUID and it used the same object instance to call the same function both the times. So even if you navigate back into the log group, you can see that there is only one log stream which is associated with that same Lambda instance. Now, if I need to create more instances, I'll have to create more requests parallelly to this Lambda function. I cannot do that using the AWS console because this waits for the response from the Lambda function. So to simulate that, I have created a simple script which will invoke our Lambda function from my command line. So let me post the script in here, which is simply a PowerShell script where I pass 
the function name and also the number of times that this needs to be invoked. So in this case, I have invoked it for quite a number of times. And if I navigate into the CloudWatch and refresh this, you can see we have many log streams in here, each of which associates with an individual instance of the Lambda function. So if I navigate into these log streams independently, you can see both of these will have different constructor GUIDs. So in this case, the constructor GUID is starting with 001, and in the other log stream, it starts with 484, which shows that these are different instances that is being called upon. Now, both of these has the init duration, which again is around the 500 milliseconds. So you can see in this case, it even took 929 milliseconds. So now that we understand what the cold start is, let's see how to enable Lambda Snap Start and how it fixes this cold start problem and the initialization duration. So let's come on to our Lambda function. Let's navigate to configuration and under the general configuration, you can click edit where we have the option to turn on Snap Start. Now Snap Start reduces startup time by having a Lambda cache as a snapshot of your function after the function has been initialized. So let's turn this on by selecting published versions and and clicking save on this page. Now Lambda Snapstart is not enabled on the default version. However, it's only enabled on a specific version that you publish. To do that, we can navigate into the versions tab and click publish a new version. So let's click that and you can give an optional description if needed. Let's click publish for now. Now this is going to create a new version for this Lambda. Now you can see this is the version number eight because I have tried creating a version previously on the same Lambda function. Now this creation does take some time to enable Lambda Snap Start on this specific version. So we'll need to wait until this version is created. However, if we navigate into CloudWatch and refresh this, we can navigate into the latest CloudWatch record. And here you can see that this is having an initialization report and it has taken around 1.6 seconds to create this Lambda function. Now this is for the Lambda Snap Start initialization phase, which is actually being run right now. Now, once this is finished, we should be able to invoke our Lambda function. The new version has been successfully created and now we can start using this version. Now, this specific version has snapshot optimization status turned on, which is specified in this configuration tab here. Now, we can navigate to the test and invoke this specific version. Let's update this text and change this to be snapshot and let's click test. Now this is going to invoke this new version that we have created and it has successfully executed that version. Now if I navigate into CloudWatch and refresh this, the new CloudWatch record will be for this specific version. Now in this case, if you look at here, we can see that there is no initialization duration. However, there is a restore duration. Now in this specific scenario, we are seeing a bit of a high restore duration, which is around 532 milliseconds, which was around the same as the initialization duration. However, if we make more requests, this restore duration will be coming down. Now let's test how it performs when we have multiple requests at the same time. So let's navigate back into our console. Let's invoke this in parallel. Now to invoke a specific Lambda function version, we need to specify the version number of the Lambda function. So let's specify colon after the Lambda snap start name, and let's specify eight in this case. We can also specify how many times we need to invoke this so we can specify the invocation count and let's say we need to invoke it five times. So let's run this again, which is going to invoke our Lambda function version, which has snap start on and it is going to run that five times. So if I navigate back into here, let's refresh this and we have the new invocation records. So let's navigate into two of them and see what the restore duration is. Now, in this case, the restore duration has come down drastically and it is around 280 milliseconds. Now, similarly, on the other record, you can see it's around the 297 mark. Now, if I navigate into one other record, you can see this is also taken around 280 milliseconds. Now, the initialization duration is completely gone, which is now being replaced by a restore duration, which is, however, much smaller than the actual Lambda function that we had. Now, if you have more initialization code in your Lambda function, the percentage of reduction will be much more in that case. Now, if you want a detailed video comparison of the performance optimization gained by using Lambda Snap Start and the normal Lambda function versus also using AOT enabled Lambda functions, let me know in the comments below and I'll do a separate video for that.
Now, in this case, let's stick to what steps that features are and how to use them. Now, coming back to these logs, you can see the constructor ID in this case starts with 0644. Now, if I switch over to another instance, you can see the constructor ID starts with exactly the same again. And this is the exact same for the other instance as well. So all of our Lambda instance now has the exact same constructor ID. This wasn't the case previously when we were using the normal Lambda function. Each of the invocation which created a new instance had a different GUID. This is because the GUID was getting constructor inside the constructor. However, with Lambda Snapstart, we are seeing that the same constructor ID is getting used across all the Lambda function invocations. So why is this happening? For this, let's understand how Lambda Snapstart works. In the normal Lambda lifecycle, we had an initialization phase after which an instance is created and any function handler invokes gets called on that specific instance. So if these requests are not happening parallelly, the same instance is going to get reused, which means the initialization is going to happen only once and the invoke is going to happen multiple times. Now, this is the case where we saw when we executed the function through the UI, the same constructor ID was getting repeated. Now, to understand more about this, I highly recommend checking out my Lambda lifecycle video. Now, with Lambda Snapstart, Lambda takes a Firecracker micro VM snapshot of the memory and the disk state of the initialized execution environment, and it creates a snapshot, and it intelligently caches it to optimize the retrieval latency. This is what we are seeing as the restore duration. It's a time taken to restore this specific cache back into memory and start using it. Now, in this specific case, the life cycle is a bit different. The initialization phase in this case is created as soon as when we create the Lambda function version. This is why it took some time to create the new version. So it was actually performing the initialization on a Lambda function, creating a memory dump and saving a snapshot so that it can cache it later. Now, all of this is happening when we create a new version and it only happens once, which means our constructor code is only getting invoked once throughout the lifetime of that specific version. Now, there might be cases where the version is refreshed because of updates in the VMs, etc., in which case the function code will get invoked again. Otherwise, it will only get invoked once. Now, once the instance and the cache is created, whenever a function call is being made, it just restores that and makes a call on that same instance. This is why we are seeing the exact same GUID on all our requests across multiple instances of the Lambda function. So when you enable Snapstart, here are some things that you need to be aware of. You need to make sure that if you're depending on any uniqueness inside this specific constructor, that will have to be rewritten. Now, in this case, I was expecting a uniqueness of the GUID in the same instance, just for demonstration purposes. And I'll have to make sure that this is getting unique across the other Lambda instances in a different way. We also have to make sure that any network connections that's created inside the constructor is refreshed inside the function handler and made sure that the connection still exists. Now with AWS SDK, usually the SDK handles the reconnection and you would be safe there. However, if you're manually creating HTTP connections, you should be refreshing and re-establishing the connection inside the handler if the connection is broken. Also, if you're using any temporary data that is being stored inside the constructor, you will need to make sure that is also getting refreshed. In our case, we had the configuration data that was getting pulled from S3. So if you are making changes to that S3 object, it will not reflect in the current case and you will have to make sure that that is getting refreshed inside your function handler if that is required. The Lambda Snapstart also provides runtime hooks that you can use to hook into these lifecycle events. Now, inside the function constructor, we can hook into one such lifecycle event. So let's use the class snapshot restore and call the function register after restore. Now, this is going to be invoked after the Lambda function has been restored and it's up and running. Now, in this case, we can specify a function. So let's specify a Lambda inside here. So let's specify an inline function in here and let's move the constructor initialization logic into that. So let's remove this from here and let's move this inside this specific code. Now we are setting the constructor ID outside of the constructor, which means we'll have to remove the read only on this. Now we can also apply the same for the configuration, but for now I'll leave it in there. Now, once we have done the initialization logic on restore, let's return a value task completed. 
So in this new code, the constructor ID is going to be set only after restoration, which means each time the function is getting restored, it is going to invoke this specific code. So let's deploy this and see if this is working as expected. So let's right click on Visual Studio and click Publish Lambda and let's publish this new Lambda function. Now, once we have published this Lambda function, we need to make sure that we also create a new version of this specific Lambda function. The publish is complete, so let's switch back into AWS console. Let's navigate to the Lambda Snapstart and create a new version for this new version that we have just published. Now, this again is going to take some time for the Lambda Snapstart initialization, which we have seen now, and it's creating and initializing our function and creating a snapshot and caching it for further use. So the new version is successfully created and it's ready for invocation. So let's navigate back into the test tab and let's test this by clicking this test part. Now this invokes our new Lambda function. So if I navigate into the CloudWatch and into the streams, let's refresh this and let's navigate to the latest log stream. So here you can see that the restore duration is around 500 milliseconds in this case. I have noticed that as soon as you invoke once a version is created, this restore duration is slightly higher. And this usually comes down with more invocations that you make on the Lambda function. So now if I navigate back into our console and let's invoke this new version, which is going to be version nine. So let's specify version nine in here and let's invoke this for five times. Times. Let's refresh this and we have the new invocation request coming in here. So let's open these in different tabs. And here you can see that the restore duration again has come down to 296 milliseconds. And also the other one has slightly lower restore duration. Now in this case, if we look at the constructor ID, we have this starting with D51. And in the other one, we have it starting with C9AE. This is because the constructor ID is now being initialized when the Lambda function is getting restored. Now, this is very similar behavior to what we had initially with our Lambda function whenever a new instance of the Lambda function was created. So anytime a new Lambda function is required, it will load up from the cache and it will call the initialization code which will create a new GUID. So if I navigate into one other record from here, you can see even in this case, the constructor ID is different. And in this case, this function was reused from a previous invocation. You can see multiple records in here. Now, one thing to note is that the restore duration or the initialization duration happens only for the first time that you invoke that instance. So you can see that subsequent request doesn't have any of these. Now, with .NET Lambda Snapstarts, there is a pricing associated with Snapstart. Now, if you're using Java managed runtimes, there is no additional cost for Snapstart. However, with .NET, there is a cost that you need to pay. So it depends on every function version that you publish and you pay the cost of caching and maintaining the snapshot. You can explore more in the Lambda pricing to see what the pricing is and the details of that. But this is something that you will need to keep in mind and make sure that you do a cleanup of versions that you're not using anymore. So now in this case, since I'm using only version nine, which is the latest, I can go to the versions tab and delete version eight so that I'm not unnecessarily paying for that specific version. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button and let me know in the comments below. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.